Hi again class. This video is being filmed in my dining room. Um, the last one I filmed on the front porch uh, a couple hours ago. And in this video I want to talk to you about The Road um, by Cormac McCarthy, especially as it relates to Parable of the Sower, so that if you want to write your final paper on Parable of the Sower um, and The Road and a, and a thematic element that brings the two novels together, um, this video is meant to kind of help you with that process because your final paper is going to be um, a five to six page paper with a research element um, on Parable of the Sower and on either one of the other two novels. So Parable of the Sower and The Road or Parable of the Sower and uh, Station Eleven. So one of the major thematic elements that I discussed in the previous video uh, was that of utopia and dystopia. And this is clearly a dystopian novel where utopia doesn't exist, not for the big corporations, not for the rich people living behind their um, big, in, big walled mansions with guard dogs and... and um, uh, patrolmen and the police all helping to protect them, um, unlike Robledo, where they're pretty much off on their own in a little separate island, that eventually um, the world is winding down in such a way, uh, social institutions are collapsing, religious institutions, the um, there's, there's global warming, it hasn't rained for six years in Parable the Sower, Whereas in The Road, you go from having the father's kind of memories of, of our world, essentially, with its colors and its animals and its um, food production, uh, higher learning. He was a doctor in his previous life. And then, boom, um, it, uh, in all likelihood, um, there's been a nuclear war we get those images of the cities that have been destroyed or are, you know, badly damaged. There's, um, there's little signs of life left. Um, and there is no room left for utopia. We are now um, six years in the future. So if the novel has a present tense, it is the approximately three months or so that the boy and his father are making their way, actually from right around here, they start in the Cumberland Gap. Um, the, all those signs, uh, which I had never seen until I moved to the south for Sea Rock City, which is a big uh, tourist attraction, I believe, in Tennessee. Um, and they make their way south down to Florida um, and finally get to the coast. Um, and the father has memories of that other world and this is one of the biggest um, points of difference between the father and the son the father um, you know wants to go to his old childhood home at one point he even thinks about um, and, and dials up the number to his own home phone number old home, uh, parents phone number and of course it doesn't do anything um, but he has dreams, fantastic dreams of the world that used to be, whereas the, the, the boy, his son, has no memories of the world except the world as it is in the present tense of the novel. Bleak. The nuclear winter has set in. There's ash everywhere. The father has some form of consumption um, and is slowly dying while he's trying to take his son down to where they hope there might be food, civilization of some sort, and of course there's almost nothing there. Um, until, of course, that family at the very end steps in and rescues the son. But the son sees utopian possibilities in the world that he's inherited. He's a moral being. Um, he wants to find other children. He wants a dog. He wants a community. And the father wants to cut them off from everyone. It's just them against whatever remains of the world. 
Um, and that seems like a really interesting point of contrast to, uh, for the two characters, which sort of leads in to my discussion of empathy and community in Parable of the Sower. Um, the sun can't help himself. He, is, he literally is a spark. He's the light. He's carrying the fire. And whatever that fire is, and that's up, open to interpretation, but in my view, that fire is not only just a pure kind of moral goodness, but that fire is a desire to share it with others. It, it doesn't have any meaning unless there are more good guys out there that they're in search of. The Father talks about them as the good guys, but in the Father's eyes, there's no goodness left. All the goodness is in that old world, except for his son. But the son imagines, like Lauren, um, possibilities of a community. And the son is almost, you could think about him as a, as a hyper-empath. When he sees others in pain, he wants to help them. He doesn't turn away. Uh, turn away. He sees instead his almost moral mission to spread some form of goodness because without someone to share it with um, other than his father, there's almost no point. Um, and the world is dying, right, at the very end. It's like it can't be set right again. Um, it's kind of a bleak novel, as, as you, you discovered. Um, but it was written in 2006, um, you know, and it was... He, Cormac McCarthy began it um, just after 9-11 um, and um, you know it won the National Book Award which means it was the best novel written in the entire country for that year and Cormac McCarthy also won the Nobel Prize for Literature he's seen as one of the greatest authors of the um, second half of the 20th century and the first half of the 21st um, so the boy's capacity to imagine still connection, community, um, and has a deep empathy, um, and you could hold them up to one another, Lauren and the boy, and to see what kinds of commonalities you might find, but also some serious differences. Um, and I, I mentioned that thematic of literacy and writing, and in this uh, the world of the road, there's all these images of books and, uh, which used to contain all the knowledge that we needed to carry civilization forward. And books are worthless. The, the father actually, like, he's physically disgusted by what the world's knowledge, its collective knowledge in books, has brought us, which is essentially a highly technological, most advanced weapon ever made that human beings, instead of being the height of technological greatness and making a new and utopian world through technology, we've instead used that technology to destroy ourselves. Um, so those are three common elements. We've got um, um, that, that thematic of, of, of empathy, carrying the fire and building community. Um, we have different versions of a kind of dystopic, dystopian world, um, whereas there's utopian possibilities that Lauren still foresees. She believes in God. God is change. Um, not a traditional Christian God like her father's, um, but an altogether different one that she's in the process of creating. She's a creator. She's creative. She's a poet. Um, she's inventing a religion. Um, and the novel wants us to take that seriously, whether the novel fully buys into it or not, um, um, or Octavia Butler even does. She's created a character and a characters around her that are quite interested in her ideas. Um, and finally, that of literacy, writing, and books, a really interesting thematic to consider. Because in, in the road, language itself is dying, he says, right? As the crow flies doesn't mean anything if there's no crows left. Um, um, he writes that the world um, 
uh, language itself has been shorn of its reference, meaning there are words, cow, crow, um, peach, that refer to things that no longer exist except in some temporary form, right? Those cans of peaches are going to go bad in a few more years. Um, and so what is left of the world when most of its language has been stripped away? And for McCarthy, he calls that the fire. And we might think about how that relates to the notion of empathy or hyper-empathy in Parable of the Sower. Okay, so the bonus question. Um, um, and I've, I've talked a little bit, I think, one thing I want you to keep in mind is what is the major difference between the father and son? The son has no reality except for the, the bleak, apocalyptic, dystopian one that he sees, whereas the father constantly remembers that old, old world. And the son sees that as a danger to his own survival and to the possibilities of a new community sort of like Lauren, who needs to move away from her father and imagine what a, a, a new community, a new form of family might look like. Um, uh, I also talked about the specific image of uh, books all falling apart in McCarthy's world. Um, and so those are two things I'd like to take you t take from this video what's the difference between the father and the son and um, the other big thematic element I'd like you to see in the road is that of images of books and writing and of the old world for your bonus question it's gonna be where were these two videos filmed and one was on my front porch and one is here in my living room um, so if you've gotten to the end of this video you know the answer now to the bonus question I hope that makes it worth your while. Hopefully you learned a little bit here about the two novels that you're going to be writing about. And as always, I welcome any questions you guys want to send in. I always enjoy sending responses back to you guys. Um, okay, so resubmit your papers. Uh, apologize for that again. And this weekend then I can reload um, my comments on your papers, the grading rubric, and you'll see what your final grade is on the paper, which I also can't upload until I have your papers resubmitted. Okay, take care.